Old School RuneScape is a liminal space, because you recognize the spirit of the place, almost nostalgically familiar, but the longer you look at it, the more foreign it becomes, so much so that it becomes uncanny. For me at least. I played Old School quite a bit back in late 2017, winter 2017, for about a year as a main. I never got out of the mid game, so there was a bunch of content I had never seen. Now there's even more new content at all different levels of the game. I saw some of it when I made an Iron Man earlier this year, but I realized I kinda miss Mainscape. So this account here is basically fresh. I did a few quests on a while back, did some of those path tutorial tasks, got a few levels. Nothing you couldn't do in a single afternoon, so I haven't made much in the way of progress. This account already had membership and I wasn't gonna buy more membership just to rewind the clock by a few hours. Unsurprisingly, early Mainscape and early Ironscape have a bit of over Overlap. The first thing I need is some starter GP, but because this is Mainscape, it's to buy food and potions for all the quests I'm planning on doing. Let me just whip out the old credit card and... no, I'm kidding. I guess that'll be one restriction. I'm not buying bonds. Could I buy bonds and just keep it a secret? Yeah. Am I going to? No. Can I prove it? Also no. Moving on. I don't have much cash to work with, I've got about 30k, but the wiki has some interesting low requirement methods I'd like to try out. Making ultra compost is an option. Grinding desert goat horns looks promising. Grinding unicorn horns. But what about this? Making rings of recoil. I'm certainly not one to turn down magic XP, especially if it means profit. So let's try that out. Seems to be about 100 GP profit on each ring. That's pretty good considering how easy this is. I'll do this for a bit until I have about 75 to 100k, or when the margins start to narrow. Ugh, I can click once to AFK enchant all the rings in my inventory. What is this, Easyscape? All right, some good progress, made over 100k and got to level 32 magic. More than enough GP to buy runes for teleports and some low level food. Tune is a cheap option, I'll go with that. Now that we're settled with that, we're gonna do something that probably most starter accounts should do. The easy Arduin diary. The monastery teleport is great. It's a very convenient way of getting to Arduin without having the magic level to teleport or having to buy Arduin teleport tablets. If you're an Iron Man, you can't buy them. If you're a main and you don't wanna buy them, this is your next best option. But we need a rusted sword to bring to Tyndall Marchant. There are a few ways of getting that sword, one of which is killing or pickpocketing ham members, but our combat level's kinda low and pickpocketing can take quite some time too, especially since the ham members like to kick you out of their base every now and then. We can actually get a rusted sword from the fishing trawler and since we have to take a trip on the fishing trawler anyway for the diary, maybe we'll luck out. The requirement to play fishing trawler is 15 fishing. And because questing is more rewarding than skilling, we're gonna do sea slug quest. Instead of getting 15 fishing, let's get 30 fire making. Early fire making is so damn quick. Make sure you bring a fishing net with you to the fishing platform. It's a medium Arduin task to fish something up here. All right, kid, let's get you home. Oops. Bad news, Carolyn. Kenneth fell in the drink. Oh? Oh, he made it back. Well, you're welcome then. 24 fishing, super easy. You know, in retrospect, I don't know why I started fishing contest, but I hate leaving quests unfinished if I can help it. So I did this and got 27 fishing, more than high enough to jump on the fishing trawler. Apparently you can fail to cut the Kraken tentacle and fail to fix the ship railing. It makes getting 50 contribution kind of tight. I brought a bunch of bailing buckets with me this time around. Every one you fill rewards two contributions. So if we're getting close to the end of the game and I need 10 or 20 more points, I can bail five to 10 buckets worth of water. Ooh, Angra Boots. Not what I was going for, but I won't complain. Ah, there's the rusted sword. Took about 10 successful excursions. We'll just take this over to Tyndall, have him identify it. Iron Longsword, we're rolling in the big bucks now. For the diary, we need to enter the combat training camp. Biohazard time. What do you think of my bedside manner? Think this shirt will comfort my patients? Before I conduct your exam, I must ask you some questions. Oh, just kill me already. Pulling the wilderness lever is a diary task. Since we're here, might as well. <laughs> I wonder if I scared that guy. I know it would have scared me if I were he and he were me. A boat from Ardoin to Remington? What is this, easy skate? I can teleport with a plague sample? That's awesome. Suck it, travel bands. Oh, whoa, is me that I cannot find my Juliet. I'm busy, Romeo, piss off. I can't hear you behind that gas mask. I said, <laughs> pretty bold of us to call it the king and spoil his conspiracy. He could execute you right here in this itty bitty throne room and no one would stop him. Dude's even got an ogre internment camp he uses as a training ground for his soldiers. Dude's evil. Also, there's the whole West Arduin thing. That's a, that, that's a problem. Last thing we got to do is have Kromps here send us to the essence mine. Now we get the reward from two pints. Unlimited teleports to the monastery south of Arduin. The closest teleport we have to Arduin for now, and the closest teleport we have to a fairy ring until we either build one in our house or get the quest cape teleport to the Legends Guild. I'm gonna hold on to the reward lamp for a bit. We can only use it in skills above 30. I'll probably save it and use it on agility. 
If this video is interesting to you and you would like to see more, subscribe for more. Also like the video for algorithm or whatever. Okay, now it's time to get birdhouse runs rolling. The sooner I get started, the sooner I can start reaping the rewards. Fossil Island has four spots you can build birdhouses on, and after about an hour, you can return and dismantle the birdhouses for hunter XP, feathers, and a random amount of birds' nests. Some with seeds, rings, and eggs, some empty. Higher level houses give more bird nests, and empty bird nests sell for over 5k. Birdhouse runs are great for training hunter, especially at early levels, so it's valuable for ironmen and mains alike. But the cost of empty birds' nests makes it amazing for noob mains like myself. To unlock Fossil Island, we need to do the quest Bone Voyage, which requires a minimum of 100 kudos at the Varrock Museum and the Dig Site quest completed. For Dig Site, we need 25 thieving. Because we can teleport to the Kandoran Monastery so easily, we're going to knock out Fight Arena. Usually, you do this quest for the attack XP, but we're unique and cute, so we're going for thieving XP instead. The attack XP is nice, though. This game's hard. That's 30 attack and 21 thieving. Tribal Totem is an easy quest too. I was already near the boat to Brimhaven, so why not? It gets us to 24 thieving. I roleplayed as Jean Valjean for a bit, but wasn't caught and sent to a prison labor camp that you know King Lathis has. 25 thieving. Time to check out old school's version of archaeology. This is me falling on old Iron Man habits. I'm gonna hold on to these polish buttons. We'll need them for animal magnetism, and you know how RPGs are. When you need the thing, you never get it. So I'm getting ahead of things. I could buy them when I need them, but I don't know, they make me feel safe. I wonder what the record for the longest dry streak getting this talisman is. I remember it feeling like it taking a long time back in the day, but it can't be that rare. Maybe 5% or so? Quest complete, 33 mining and 17 arbler, but more importantly, kudos time. We can talk with Historian Minus about our quest for a few kudos, and another XP lamp I'm gonna hold on to. You need level 20 in the skill you wanna use it in, probably gonna save it for agility as well. Then there's the museum exam. For each display that we answer three animal facts correctly, we get two kudos. Did you know that some penguins will sometimes adopt orphaned penguin chicks? They sometimes kidnap them too, but that fact isn't as heartwarming. Birds are complex creatures with the human-like capacity to be both caring and cruel. Quite a sight to see. We can get 50 kudos from cleaning finds and we'll hopefully luck out and dig up a clean necklace sooner rather than later. We'll need the dig site necklace to make birdhouse runs easier. And there's the necklace. Cinco Dor, this is literally the first time I ever bother reading this guy's name. He teaches us how to enchant ruby necklaces in exchange for this find. We don't have the magic level to enchant ruby jewelry yet, nor do we have the crafting level to make ruby necklaces, but that's the benefit of being a main. We can just buy the necklaces and enchant ruby tablets. 98 kudos, literally two kudos away from starting Bone Voyage with nothing left to do besides quests. Guess it's time to do another quest. We're gonna need some crafting levels to make birdhouse runs easier, and looking at the list of kudos granting quests, it seems observatory quest is my best option. Let me just grab some items from Adventurer John real quick. Is there a longsword? Yeah, all right. 2250 XP from this quest gets us to 15 crafting, and Historian Minus gives us the last kudos we need to start Bone Voyage. Part of the quest requires us to visit the Woodcutting Guild on Karend. One benefit of being a main is that I can freely use other people's homes for teleport jewelry. Oh, I must travel to Great Karend before I can use this teleport. Let me just, uh... Do that real quick. One benefit of being a main is that I can freely use other people's homes for teleport jewelry. Hey guys, I managed to log into the Sailing Beta Worlds. Check it out. The wind is blowing us off course. Yeah, I know, I'm turning the rudder, but nothing's happening. We're on course. Keep it up. Oh, you don't say. This floating toothpick- The island is straight ahead. How can you see from here? Check your bearings. What does that even mean? You're heading the wrong way. You need to get back on course. The boat won't turn. Oh, You're finally, green bar, we're there. Um... The wind oh, you motherfucker! I think it needs to bake a little longer. Now that we're finally here, we can get our birdhouse runs rolling. I won't be fixing up the base camp yet since I don't have the construction level for it, so we won't be having a bank here for a bit, but that's fine because getting to the island is quite easy. I'll activate the mushroom meadow mush tree first. It's like a spirit tree. It lets you access the mycelium network and teleport between the island's mush trees. There's four of them, but we only need three right now. Then I'll head up to the house on the hill and activate that mush tree and use my dig site necklace on the strange machine, unlocking its second teleport option. This is why the necklace is so important. This is the fastest way of getting to Fossil Island for birdhouse runs. It brings you right here, right near a mush tree. The last mush tree I'll be grabbing, the fourth one's not important right now, 
is in the Verdant Valley near two of the four birdhouse spots, and we're set up for birdhouse runs. Teleport to the house on the hill, come to the Verdant Valley first, collect your loot and XP, replace the birdhouses, then go to the meadow. There's a birdhouse spot to the north and another to the south. Takes less than five minutes of work for a hefty amount of hunter XP and some bird nests. All you need to bring with you is some seeds, a hammer, a chisel, and some logs. The first time, you need a clockwork mechanism for each birdhouse spot, but you can reuse them every single time, so you just need the four forever. As for the logs, I know I could just buy them from the GE, but I'm keen on checking out the forestry update that was released a few months ago. It looks very interesting. We'll do that next time. Thanks for watching, and thank you to the channel members for your support.